A couple of things I want to show you before we finish up. Things that will come in handy. The first is TF log equals one. That's how you turn on logging. Zero obviously turns it off. If you are trying to figure out what Terraform is doing, just turn on logging in your shell. And well, <laughs> this isn't very exciting because we're not we're not creating anything new. But uh, if you say are deleting something or creating something new, you'll actually see a lot more output from Terraform. It can make it a lot easier to narrow down um, bugs that you've got in your configuration code. Um, if you see things like, you know, Terraform detected a cycle, which is uh, what it's called when basically one resource that depends on another resource, that other resource also depends on the first one, so they, they can never ever get created because they each depend on the other one to be like ready before they can start. So things like that, if you're trying to figure out where you've got a cycle, where you've got a configuration error, where like file does not exist, like which file, where is that? Um, if the log output is ever not enough for you, just turn on TF log equals one. And again, you can just turn it off again with zero. The other thing I want to talk about is TF state. So Terraform creates a file called terraform.tf state, and that is its local state. That's everything on the remote end that it knows about. You can refresh this state if you want, uh, like if it somehow gets out of sync with the remote end. Um, but it's uh, generally something you want to protect very closely, and especially when you're sharing Terraform with like a team, this is sort of what Terraform thinks is true. So it's pretty important to manage this. Um, add some semaphores around this, like make sure that you can like lock this file, check it out, make some changes, check it back in, and then other people on your team can have that new state, uh, or else you're going to get into some weird state issues with Terraform. But let's actually look at what this is. So we've got three resources. Uh, that's actually not true. We've got a little more than three resources now. We've got three uh, DigitalOcean droplets. We've got, you can see here, a template file that it knows about. Uh, this is really dense, sorry, because that's actually the content of that file. Um, we've got a droplet here and everything we know about it. So these are like what Terraform knows about. Like last time it checked, it had this IP address. It had this private IP and so on. Here's our web one droplet, web two droplet, uh, and that, that's it for our resources. But if this file gets corrupted, it gets lost, um, especially if you have more complex infrastructure, it can be a real pain uh, to recover. It's getting better as Terraform becomes more mature, but there's a reason that there's a backup of this file here, right? If your Terraform state ever gets like out of sync or something, you want to refresh it, something's changed on the remote end, like you know somebody did something, somebody deleted, I don't know, a couple of machines or whatever, you can use Terraform refresh. Just pass in all the same stuff and you'll see it refresh the TF state. Say it comes time to destroy a project such as this one because we don't want it to take up any more money. I really suggest that you do a Terraform plan, well, dash destroy, but then with an out file. So here I've specified dash out. And so what this will do is actually write a Terraform plan to a file. Um, and I'll just show you the, the destroy here. It echoes the plan out here and then it writes a plan file named destroy all Terraforms. It's telling me it's going to destroy these three things. That's fine. I'm expecting that. And this is just a binary file. So not, not interesting for you to look at. But then you can use Terraform apply and then the name of the TF plan you want to apply. I'm just going to apply exactly what's in this plan. So I recommend that you set up some change management around your TF state and any plans. So like you check in a plan, someone approves it, and then you run that TF plan. Okay, so we've run our first destroy. If we reload here, we should see that all these resources have been removed. So I hope that's been useful. Um, I hope you see the power of defining resources in this way, of infrastructure as code, of managing change with something like Terraform, of defining resources and having something else do the like dependency graph and figuring out what to do in which order without breaking anything. This tool is spectacular. It's fantastic. Uh, in my opinion, as soon as you're managing like five or 10 things, you should just be using Terraform for it. It is so easy to start using it. The really nice thing is as you saw during this uh, demonstration, 
doesn't actually touch the rest of my infrastructure, right? So I have these other things in here. Terraform only touches whatever you tell it to manage. So if I don't tell it to manage those things, they're totally safe. And if I can run as many Terraform destroys as I want, it's never gonna touch something that it didn't actually create and manage. So there you go. If you've been working through this project from part one, you should now have all the theoretical knowledge and practical skills to actually get started doing some stuff with Terraform, which is the best way to learn. So. Hope that was useful. Like and subscribe if it was, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.